So I was awarded, along with a couple of other institutions, um, a National Science Foundation grant uh, for four years to study the morphological and molecular evolution of a group of tropical vines called passion flowers. And what I'm, I'm doing here at Keene State is I have, um, we have three genes that we need to sequence for our project. There are six total and we're doing three here at Keene State and three in California. My primary responsibility is really to involve undergraduates in our work. Um, that's what I, my, t my main task is. Like, here's an example. In our classrooms, we're using textbooks that are three years old, three or four years old. And so let's say um, you were taking a course in communication technology. Those textbooks would have no information in them about the iPhone, right, which has a huge impact, or Twittering, or anything like that that has had a huge impact on our society and the way we communicate. You know, that's up-to-date information. The, the information we're giving our students in our, te in our textbooks is old. You know, we have to find ways to engage them in current stuff that's going on. And by engaging them in current funded research, what we're doing is, is we're allowing them to be a part of the new stuff that's going These on. These guys are not consuming knowledge, they're producing knowledge. And I think that that is what's really, really important. You know, if you're an employer or you're a professor, who is looking for a student, you know, are you going to choose a student who's been a consumer? Or are you going to choose a student who's been a producer? I have a bigger effect as a teacher on these research students, without any doubt. It, it has a big impact on them as, um, as learners. They become invested in their education. They become involved in a project that's bigger than, than just a week-long laboratory they do in a class. We are producing a first class education here by not only engaging them in the classroom, but engaging them in active research. And I don't care if it's like you're writing a novel or you're designing a building, whatever. Engaging students in that kind of thing is going to make them on the competitive scale up here rather than down here. You know, one thing I like most is digital storytelling because a lot of creativity is in, in students' work. And, you know, we know that storytelling is a very traditional way to transfer knowledge. Like parents and grandparents, they read the stories to their children. Then that's a knowledge transfer from generation to generation, also from one person to another person. So that's a traditional way. But the digital storytelling is a new way. We integrate a lot of new technologies like video, audio, visual, and also internet. So that makes those story more vivid and uh, more visual to the students. So that's a good way of learning. Because we know people learn differently, right? We have a lot of you know, visual learners, we have auditorial learners, we have uh, reflective learners, they, all kinds of learners. And um, the digital storytelling accommodate those different learning styles, especially visual and auditorial learners. So when you teach a story, the traditional way of storytelling is like through auditory, you know, conversation verbally transfers knowledge. But when the students hear the story uh, from the storyteller and also they see the visual things, they make connections of the meaning of the story to the visuals they see on the screens. From my own experience teaching students, there's no way you can teach everything to the students. So I would say um, the most important thing for our students is how to develop themselves as lifelong learners. Well, for this past semester in the Women's Studies 101, we have replaced traditional modes of learning with technology-based. So by way of a uh, web page, the students have been now using that technology in order to complete their assignments so that they've made video diaries using webcams, narrative commentaries, as well as their final project, which is a YouTube video. And they all get posted to the web page. So this has been very innovative and different as opposed to how I've taught the Women's Studies 101 in the past at this institution. The biggest challenge was this was new to me and the students. I've never utilized technology in this way and was very unaware of how to do so. So CELT has been an enormous help in that to promote this whole new way of thinking and creating a class. 
the biggest highlight is that it's furthered the learning beyond the classroom and beyond just a paper. In the past, I've always had them do 20-page papers, and I feel that while they could tell me quite a bit, it didn't, their learning or their engagement didn't go beyond that paper. And with all of this now, now that they have one place to go and they can access via technology the work of the other students, the students are now coming in and commenting about what others have done, which I think really promotes their learning and, and furthers it beyond what they can just do within the classroom. The course that we're talking about is called Nicaragua and Change and it's part of the Integrative Studies program. <laughs> it was really great because uh, it was open to all students but I hadn't really heard about it. It's mainly, you know, sociology students but Carly came back to my apartment one day and she's like, you're not going to believe where this trip is going. So I was really excited. I hadn't been abroad uh, yet and this sounded like a great idea. So. This semester uh, we went to Nicaragua to visit a cooperative that we've had a relationship with for a number of years and we communicate with them to find out what we will do when we're together and this year they were interested in they already have a school, they already have a church, they have a community center, a youth center um, they just got electricity in 2007 mm -hmm. and what they needed was a place for very young children uh, to develop and so the project that we worked on was uh, working together to purchase some paints to design what this would look like and to spend a day. It was a short project. So it was an opportunity for, um, for us and the students to really step outside of our culture and live in the life of somebody from another part of the world and see something from another set of eyes from another dimension. Yeah, I think it kind of opened my eyes again. I've I lived in Keene the majority of my life. I guess I've traveled different parts in the United States, but until you travel out of the country and really get a different feel of how fortunate the United States is and how much we have compared to other places. Um, so yeah, it was definitely an eye-opening. It made me appreciate what I have, but also made me want to give back to people who have less and are less fortunate than we. Um, Sky Stevenson, our Global Education Office Director, uh, said a lovely phrase to me recently. She said, you know, we can bring Keene to the world and we can bring the world to Keene. And I think programs like this, and there are many of them now on campus, they do exactly that. So I think that the word of mouth on trips like these are that they're incredibly positive, that they're, uh, they're something that is truly experiential, that they help students to learn more than they think they can in the classroom, although I think learning by reading is fine too. Um, but it's one more added dimension to the education that they're receiving here at Keene State. I definitely feel more of a responsibility to engage other people on campus, you know, and talk with them about what I saw. Before, you know, somebody would come back from a trip abroad and, you know, you'd look at their pictures and you'd hear the stories and but you can't really relate to it until you've done it yourself and then once you come back you just have so much knowledge that you just want to just share with everybody and I think that's what really changed me is just you know being more of a citizen of the world rather than just a citizen of Keene, New Hampshire or the United States.